Hi everyone. Um, so uh, we are um, talking about uh, some of the uh, control structures. I also wanted to highlight one of the things about SORT. We learned about SORT in the previous lecture. Um, we can use uh, SORT to order a list and assign uh, the result to another variable. Um, for example, here in this one, the let one array is all these um, various letters, and then uh, we assign the sorted form of uh, let let one to the array let two. Um, one thing to remember with sorting is uh, when we just use a regular sort, it's always an ASCII sort, but what that means is it results in the lowercase um, letters appearing after the uppercase letter um, also the number will sort in a different order than you expect for example the 12 will be after one or two because each um, position will be sorted um, basically the numbers will be sorted on the positions it is not on the numerical value itself. So um, if you want to sort a different way like I mean for example the real numeric sort where you want to have 12 before 102 you need to have different sorting orders so for that um, we use we need to use uh, separate ones uh, separate um, parameters we saw this briefly in the previous lecture um, so here I am going to elaborate it a little bit more as to how to change the sort order so um, essentially as I mentioned basically to change the sort order you need to add an argument to the sort function the argument is a block of code which contains instructions as what is the new sort order. So inside the block of code we define two variables which are dollar $A and dollar $B um, and these are, the, these are the variables used to indicate the elements in a list and then we define a logical operation between these two to denote what is the real sort order. Um, the logic returns one of the three values when comparing A and B that is one if A is less than B or one if A is greater than B or zero if they are equal. So assume that I mean this is the, the, the given condition. So we use now a specific um, operator called a spaceship operator which is less than equal to greater than all three combined it looks like a spaceship. Uh, so hence it is a spaceship operator this performs the comparison of A and B the spaceship operator essentially returns negative 1 if the left is less than the right and 1 if left is greater than the right and 0 when they are equal. So here is how to use it basically so the new list is sort A spaceship operator B and then the list. So this is real numeric value sort essentially like so um, um, essentially this um, works with numbers and it is, does not work with strings so just take care when you are using it um, but we saw this operator and uh, this how to uh, do a sorting of uh, numerical arrays at the time we did not specify this basic operator in the detail so that is the reason why I introduced uh, this uh, these slides. Um, so in, in order to reverse essentially like or sort from the highest to the lowest all we got to do is this uh, what this, this is also we saw in the previous one basically like dollar $B and then you use the spaceship operator dollar $A um, if sorry dollar $A and if this is the condition then the list or the new sorted the, the sorted list will be from the biggest one to the lowest one so in other words like in 102 followed by 12 which is I mean not the the number order but essentially the numerical value essentially so um, just keep in mind um, also Perl has the grep function um, the grep function typically um, searches for patterns in an array. Uh, and then the syntax is essentially like this grep followed by the pattern and then the list. So for example if you want to find all the elements with pattern day in an array 
um, which is array is defined as uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Um, essentially, like I mean, when we say like uh, the array list equal to grep, the pattern, the pattern is always um, enclosed within the, um, the the slashes that we already know about, and then um, base is the array that this array that we are specifying here. This will um, populate the array result with the matching elements. In this case, all the three will will appear in this uh, results as well. So why is um, so? Let's do, see. Like I mean, how it is, it works. Uh, how grep works. Um, basically, the the grep works by proceeding through an array one element at a time, assigning the element to the default variable. Uh, dollar underscore. This we know about uh, the dollar underscore. It's pr pretty much common. Um, then the pattern to be found is compared against the dollar underscore. So it goes through these two operations. Number one is to um, assign one element uh, to the default variable, and then it compares the pattern against the dollar underscore. And then uh, once that that is successful, then it is getting the point. The pattern is found, then the expression is true, and then the element is returned by the graph. If pattern is not found, then the element is not returned by graph. So, so, so this way we can accumulate that element um, or in an array. So, why is graph uh, important? Is because now we can do like uh, hash intersections essentially. Uh, so one common task in Perl is to find intersection of two hashes or arrays. So means like um, we built one array from one file, and then we grab to see like whether there is any match. So to find an intersection, the grab function is uh, very useful. So how do we do this? Um, essentially, um, what we do is um, so here. The problem is to find the intersection between these two arrays. So here we declare uh, another hash called temp, and then we, for each of the elements of array, we actually create uh, um, the hash, or essentially like uh, add the elements into the hash array with the index as the array's uh, element, and then the value or the actually the key as the um, Array element and then the value as one. Now the intersection is uh, fairly simple. Uh, the array intersect is same as grep of um, the temp dollar underscore, um, and then of all the elements in array two. So for each of them, basically, like it uh, finds out uh, what is the um, uh, the value there. So essentially, like the code starts by setting up an empty hash for each uh, stores each element in array um, one in dollar underscore uh, one at a time and fills the templates with them and sets the value to one. The last line examines the at array uh, one element at a time and sets it to dollar underscore, which is grepped in um, the hash array temp if there is um, if there it is an intersection um, element and that is added to the intersect so each value each one from uh, array 2 that is uh, stored as dollar underscore and that is searched in that array um, in basically in the hash array and if it is there, then it returns that particular um, value, and which is actually stored in the intersect. So this is a very easy way to um, do an intersection. What if you want to do a difference of uh, two ways? Um, so all we got to do is we just uh, negate the the uh, search condition essentially. Um, so we build the same array. Only thing is, like when we do the grep, we do a um, bang in front of the temp underscore temp dollar underscore. 
so this will give you the intersection or essentially the difference uh, between the two arrays so whichever the element that is in uh, array 1 um, or array 2 that is not in array 1 will be um, um, or both of them that those uh, elements will show up in the uh, at the array intersect. Now um, I want to introduce you to a new variable which is uh, dollar bank. Um, so when an error gets recorded by Perl, that error gets uh, stored in a special variable called dollar bank. So when we when we examine when it is examined numerically, dollar bank shows a number, but if you are examining as a string, it shows the error message from the operating system. Uh, we can use this as part of the die string essentially. Like so, if uh, and open and then dollar bank with the new line. So this statement will display the message and open, followed by the error string from the operating system. When the value is triggered, so um, instead of even bombing out of a program using die, we can simply use a warning to the user, and then the warning messages are conveyed through this one. So this is again another subroutine with the message, and then um, it basically um, gives uh, the warning message. The warn command will display an error message, but the program will keep running. So you can use the one codes to one, you can use the error codes with the one. Basically, that is the same dollar dollar bank um, along with one. So we talked about the file open, uh, file close. Uh, one thing that uh, we did not do in the last uh, lecture was um, how to um, test uh, the various files essentially. So uh, what this means is essentially like I mean we can also test whether a file is read only, write only, or whether we are opening a directory, things like that. Um, so this is the similar kind of uh, test that uh, the, the the same uh, that's performed by Unix essentially that can be done inside of Perl as well. So the usually like I mean the, um, the, the this test is done as if dash r file and then this file is predetermined file handle and then we do some operations so this particular um, test basically like I mean uh, the, um, uh, the read only essentially uh, test for whether this particular file handle is a read only file and this condition has one valid option followed by the file handle to be tested. Uh, alternatively we can use a file name or a full path of the file name instead of the file handle so here we don't we are not restricted to just using the file handle we can also use the full name of the file so the tests essentially like I mean one of them uh, we can perform and what are the tests essentially there is a whole bunch of tests in Perl uh, dash uppercase B is true if it is a binary file um, dash D tests for whether it is a directory, dash E just tests for whether the file exists in the directory and dot uh, dash F checks if uh, it is a regular file, uh, dash uppercase M uh, returns the age in days since last modification, uh, dash R um, basically it is the if it is uh, readable or not, dash S will return the file size in bytes dollar uppercase t is uh, true if it is a text file dollar w is a writable file and then the i mean the, sorry dash w is a writable file and dash z is true if uh, the file is existing but it is an empty file so these are all the various tests that we can do um, in Perl. So um, we can actually use these tests to verify files when opening or writing. Um, if you are prompting the user for a file name, you can also check to make sure that the file exists. 
and it is the correct uh, type of data that uh, you want to use it in the program. Uh, you can also test to make sure that uh, you are not overwriting these things. So now the other operator that uh, you will uh, always find in Perl programs is uh, what is called strict. The Perl's keyword strict is um, essentially like I mean it tells the interpreter to use much more care while evaluating or when evaluating statements and to display the warnings and error messages for everything it finds questionable. Um, essentially like to one thing to note is usually Perl will let you get away with quite a bit of uh, quite a bit before actually complaining about something. Um, using strict is a good way to enhance your programming abilities to use this one basically just to put um, use strict at the top of the code. So now let's talk about the Perl uh, debugger. Um, so the Perl debugger, the parts of the debugger is uh, Perl interpreter is a debugger that you can use to examine the execution of the Perl scripts. The debugger allows step-by-step -step execution of scripts, examination of uh, variable values, and the use of a breakpoint. So these are all like typical use of a debugger which is also like uh, available in Perl. The debugger is built into every Perl interpreter and it is um, activated using the dash D option when launching the interpreter. For example Perl minus D my program dot text activates the debugger. When you launch a program with the debugger option, uh, you will see the version information for the Perl, Perl uh, interpreter and then a help prompt um, enter H or quote HH for help, uh, then the first line of the script. You will see a message showing which file name the statement is in and what the line number was. Finally, the debugger prompt db will come up, so at this point it is waiting for your first debug command. So when the debugger shows you a statement it is in the cache already uh, to be executed but it has not been executed that is the key thing basically, so it is not executing the statement it is waiting for you to tell when to execute, each statement read by the debugger can be examined and manipulated prior to it being run, this allows for some changes or examination of the environment before each statement is executed which is ideal for debugging the script, okay, so any verb valid Perl command can be used at the debugger form, you can get help from within the debugger at any time uh, using the H or help command. Um, usually followed by the command that you want information about for example the help on breakpoint command just simply type hb the command hh shows the summary of available commands and their syntax so that is like help on help you think of it that way to page the output uh, from the help system put the the line line operator essentially in front of the command um, such as um, bar hh this uh, lets you uh, to page down the, the, the system commands. Uh, to list the next 10 lines in the Perl script use the bar command every time you issue the bar command the next 10 lines will be, uh, will be shown. Uh, listing the lines uh, does not affect the line that is being executed, it simply shows you the next 10 lines of the script. The next line to be executed um, is shown like 3 equal to with the uh, um, greater than sign. You can also specify which lines to show by using a range um, that is uh, L 10 through 15. It's essentially like shows line from uh, 10 to 15. 
I think this is the L actually. To run each line uh, one at a time in the debugger, we can use the next command or the end command. Um, each line shown is shown on the screen before it gets executed. To see the value of any variable, use the print command at the prompt, which is uh, print dollar bar one. I'm going to give you the, the, the particular value of the variable, and then the current values can be shown without affecting the program. And similar to other debuggers, we can use the end command to step through each line of the program on the termination. When a subroutine call is encountered by the debugger in the script, it executes the subroutine as a single call and does not allow does not show the lines in that subroutine. To jump into the subroutine and move through line by line, we use the S or the step command. When you issue the step command, the debugger shows each line one at a time executed inside the subroutine and all valid debugger commands can be used inside the subroutine. So using uh, the breakpoints essentially um, actually breakpoints let us look at the breakpoints um, we can use the end command to step through the program let the debugger run all the lines until the sum condition is not this is a breakpoint and it is set with B command we can set a breakpoint at any line number by specifying that particular line number so for example B10 will set the breakpoint at line 10 and C or the continue command will let you continue executing after a breakpoint has been triggered. So how how do we use or why do we use breakpoints? Um, so we can set a breakpoint on any line of the script except those that have just the curly braces or closing parentheses, a blank line or a comment usually breakpoints are used after a loop subroutine return or any complex command so that you can verify the action is taken um, you can set the breakpoint anywhere except those listed above to show all the breakpoints that are set in the script use the uppercase L commands to remove the breakpoint we can use B command followed by the line number um, or the subroutine number if the breakpoint is set to the subroutine. For example, D37 will delete the breakpoint that is set on line number 37. And then the reset command we can reset the debugger to clear all the breakpoints in the variables and restart the execution of the script from the top with just uh, one command, which is the uppercase R command. And reset is executed, any defined variables lose their value, and then the first line of the script is uh, to be executed, is the to be executed line. So the built in debugger is acceptable for simple tracing and debugging, um, it is all it is not suitable for very complex debugging uh, tasks, also, it is not graphical. But there are many GUI based uh, debuggers available in the market, uh, some bundled with Perl uh, distributions and some are standalone debuggers. The active state Perl distribution has a Windows debugger in the package, uh, for example, uh, and there are several available for Unix and Linux. So I think like I mean that uh, pretty much concludes this half an hour this uh, lecture um, we will continue uh, from this point uh, in the next one okay uh, thank you.